Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Hi, I'm Ron Jacobs, Senior Technical Evangelist from Microsoft. Joined today by Matt Winkler, one of the co-authors of WCF Unleashed. 3.5. 3.5, okay. Cool stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so myself, Craig McMurtry, Mark McCurry, and Nigel Watling all collaborated on the what's now the third edition of this book. Uh, so it started out, um, you know, we had WCF Unleashed, now we have WCF Unleashed 3.5. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's in this book that's pretty valuable is it's got a lot of coverage of all of the new features that we introduced in 3.5. Oh, so okay. 3.0 was kind of the uh, the introduction to the world of WCF and mm -hmm. WF. Yeah. Uh, in 3.5, we did some pretty cool things. So from the WCF side of things, we did a bunch of work around HTTP and REST style programming. Right, right. Uh, we also did some neat work with serializing to JSON, so mm -hmm. you can consume services and results from services from support, JavaScript. Yeah, support AJAX pages, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other pretty neat thing that we did is that we really brought together uh, WF and WCF, so Windows Workflow Foundation and Windows Communication Foundation. Right. Um, in And that's the, the bulk of what I worked on in the book. Yeah, yeah, because you were the workflow guy, right? So they, they, they the token workflow guy that got included. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, but but really though, when you think about it, there's a there's a lot to cover here about the way that uh, workflow services, as we like to call them, uh, actually function. So, uh, uh, what are some of the high points? Yeah, so if you think about workflow services, there, there's kind of two ways to think about it. Mm -hmm. One, if I'm a service developer, if I write services, why do I care about workflow? Right, uh, and the, there are really kind of two reasons, uh, I think. One is that workflow gives you a really nice development environment. Uh, if you think about services, usually compose things, workflows compose activities, provides a nice uh, ability to compose together a number of different uh, things inside of a service. But the yeah. really interesting thing is that expressing your service as a workflow allows you to uh, kind of enforce an application protocol. Uh, so what, what what we mean by this is normally with a service, uh -huh. I just have a list of these are the five methods I expose. These are right. the five operations. And you can call these. Uh, and then what I have to end up doing is at the beginning of each one of those, like if you send me uh, the, can if you call cancel order, yeah. I need to do a whole bunch of work to say, am I even at the right place where I can cancel an order? Right. Uh, and so we end up building this kind of uh, this logic at the beginning of all of our operations that kind of says, am I at the right place in the world? Uh, and if we think as we go beyond five operations to uh, you know, 10, 20, 30, and mm -hmm. really complex uh, interactions, uh, application protocols, that logic gets more and more. Uh, what I can do with workflow is I can express that protocol as a workflow. And so I can say the only way that this workflow is going to be initiated is on the submit order. Right. Uh, and then, only then, can I listen for cancel order or confirm order or update order details. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and that allows me to really enforce a, a, life sp a lifespan for my, my service. Yeah. The, I mean, the other interesting thing about it is there's this context thing that goes on. And, and uh, so you kind of plumb the depths of the context channel and how it all works. Talk to me about yeah, that. Yeah, sure. So the once I have this idea that I want you to interact with me over some period of time, I'm a workflow exposed as a service. Right. Once you start me going on something, yeah. I'm going to go and I'm going to keep doing that. And at some point, I'm going to stop and I'm going to wait. I'm going to say, I don't have any more work to do. I'm waiting for more input. I'm going to wait for some more service calls. But when those service calls come in, somehow they've got to get routed to me. Yeah. Right. I have to know which instance of a workflow to route to. And the way that we do that is through, really, it's just like the HTTP cookies, mm -hmm. right? You submit to me. When you call me the first time, I'm going to send back to you this little bit of context, this token that says, hey, if you want to send me any messages, yeah. use this context token. Go ahead and send that back over to me. Mm. Uh, and really, once you understand workflow in WCF, if you understand the context token, if you understand the context exchange, really that that's kind of the zen of workflow services. And once you yeah. get that, then you can start to really expand out and building some pretty interesting topologies and protocols with your uh, workflows. Yeah, well, and I'm sure that you know, 
just reading your book, it totally save a ton of time. It'd be worth every cent. Yes, <laughs> yes, it would be. <laughs> if you did that. So <laughs> be sure to check it out, WCF Unleashed. Thanks, 3.5. 3.5, yeah. <laughs> For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.